We thinkers recognize the power of reason over faith no matter how that decision occurs. We don't need anyone telling us whom to agree with or whom to like. Still, just like there are many types of theists, there are many types of atheists. We discuss several here. First, we must define an atheist and atheism. Atheism is the quality or condition of being without religious beliefs. An atheist is a person who is without religious beliefs. Those definitions do not ascribe any philosophical beliefs to an atheist. Atheism is not a philosophy. It is a philosophical condition or an intellectual attitude. Atheism may then be likened to the common cold. You may have a cold or you may not. You may be getting a cold. You may be recovering from a cold. You may acquire the cold under many different circumstances. Smith divided atheism into two broad categories, implicit and explicit. Implicit atheism is the absence of theistic belief without a conscience rejection of it. Explicit atheism is the absence of theistic belief due to a conscience rejection of it. An implicit atheist is a person who does not believe in God, but who has not explicitly rejected or denied the truth of theism. Implicit atheism does not require the familiarity with the idea of God. Babies, and in my opinion, some children fall under implicit atheists. Anyone who does not believe in God because they have no knowledge of the concept qualifies as implicit atheist. Explicit atheism rejects religious beliefs outright and may be motivated by psychological factors. The most significant variety of atheism contends that belief in God is irrational and should therefore be rejected, since this version of explicit atheism rests on a criticism of theistic beliefs, it is best described as critical atheism. Smith actually goes on to give three forms of critical atheists. We will discuss them in a later project. There are many different types of atheists. They share many different philosophies. Philosopher George H. Smith offers two categories, implicit and explicit atheists. I would like to offer a third variety of atheists. It is a group dismissed by Smith as insignificant philosophically, but listed under explicit atheists. I believe there are enough of them to warrant their own group. I call this third variety of atheism inexpressive atheism. It can also be referred to as passive atheism. We will include in this group not babies, but children up to the age of reason. We will set the age of reason, for argument's sake, at between seven and nine years old. Let us say I reject religion because it reminds me of abuse from my father. Such a condition is logical, but is not a rational defense of atheism. If a nun rejects religion because Catholicism forbids women from becoming priests and other sexist practices, such a condition is logical, but is not a rational defense of atheism. Then, I believe, there are people who simply cannot put their words together in a rational response to complex concepts. Becoming an atheist is only half the battle. Since atheism is not a philosophy, one still must choose and live by a philosophy. There is also a group of people who reject religion on the grounds that there is not enough room for it with everything else life offers. There are those people who cannot or will not reject religion openly to others and or themselves. There should be an atheist group. Finally, there are those people educated in a politically correct environment where it is encouraged to be non-judgmental. Consequently, there are atheists who will not criticize religion as a matter of philosophy. Whatever the reason, inexpressive atheists reject religion without always giving or being able to give rational, specific cause. Because atheism is not a philosophy, 
The case for it is a case against religion. The first defense of atheism is a critique of theism. We explicit atheists differ after acceptance of our condition. How we defend our condition, where we go from there existentially, who knows? <laughs>